Okay, so for some time I've been saying that I was going to make a UI tutorial, and that's what this is going to be. We're specifically going to focus on one usage of the UI. Uh, a very common usage is, say, scoring. So, you know, like a player score, uh, maybe a life meter, that kind of thing. But I want to show how else you can use the UI. There might be, say, some kind of full screen visual effect, like maybe there's screen splatter. Or maybe there's cracks in the screen, like maybe someone's wearing a helmet and the helmet gets cracked. Um, you know, the visor gets cracked, that kind of thing. So you can use the UI for those kind of effects. And one of the reasons why you do that is because the UI is on top of everything else. So in a 2D game, it's easy enough to fake it because you always have what's known as order and layer. In a 3D game, though, you really want that UI to be on top of everything, you know, that visual effect to be on top of everything. So you can use the UI. And you'll see that once the UI is made, the controlling and the functionality is very similar to what you would do in a 2D game. So let's go to Game Object. We're going to go to UI, and we're going to choose Image. Now, even though we chose Image, if you notice, it's a child of the canvas, and then we have this event system. We're really not going to talk about the event system in this one. We're going to do it manually with scripts. So let's get right into it. Now, when you try lining up the canvas with the camera, it's not going to look right. If we zoom out here, you see the camera's over here, and yet you see this outline of this way out here. So it's going to look wrong, but once it runs, it will be fine. So what we're going to do is let's start with the bullet holes in the screen. So we're going to click on that image. And we're going to put bolt holes, and we're just going to drag and drop to where it says source image bolt holes. Now, to line this up, what we're going to do is we're going to have the bolt holes be on by default and then shut them off. So let's go ahead and run that. And there they are, way too small and really in the wrong place. So what we need to do is we need to scale them. So let's try 5 by 5 and run it again better. Let's try 7 by 7. Hmm. 12 by 12. There, that really does it. Now we're going to do a manual lining up. So even though I said that you really don't want to line up the canvas because you can see how enormous this looks, you can still line this up at least the image. So let's just push this up a little bit and run it again. Push it up, push over. Okay, let's make it just a touch smaller. Let's go to 11 by 11. There we go. And you can use um, the anchors here but as you can see you can manually move it if you want so either way okay so we have our full screen image and just to prove that it really is full screen and that well not that it's full screen but that's on top of everything else here's what we're going to do first we're going to temporarily change the color so we're going to click here and we're just going to make it blue oh kind of purple now we're going to create a game object, 3D object, and a cube. I'm going to put that at 0, 0, negative 9. So you know it's like right up against the camera. There we go. So you can see this, the, the cube is filling the screen, but indeed, the bullet holes are in front of it. Let's just back it up a little bit. And it's hard to see because I pulled back to see the, um, 
to see the canvas, but you can see that the, the block is there. So no matter how close the block is, no matter how close the block is, the um, this indeed is acting like a UI element that it's staying on top of it. Okay, so let's just delete the cube because like I, I said, that was just to prove, to demonstrate that this is indeed acting like a UI object. And for it to work properly, it has to be a child to the canvas. Okay, so we've got our bullet hole, holes. Let's go back and turn this back to white. Now, what we wanna do is we want to be able to have these appear and disappear if you get shot. Now, since this isn't a fully functioning game, can't really do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it triggered by a keystroke. You would instead, instead of having a keystroke, you would have some kind of a variable that says you've been shot or you or whatever. And instead of checking for the keystroke, you would check for that variable to see if that variable has been toggled to yes or no. So right click, create C Shop script, and we'll call this UI image trig. Short for UI image triggering or triggers, whatever. So what we're going to do is, and like I said, at this part, it's really going to be like any other game, uh, 2D or 3D, uh, as far as the uh, coding. So just take that script, drag and drop it onto the image, open it up. Now, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to make the bolt holes invisible. If in your game you find out that this is creating a performance issue, there certainly are alternatives. But again, we're just trying to do the basics. And, and the idea is that you can use the UI for these full screen effects. So let's just paste this into the start section. So it's a typical get component statement. So get component, canvas renderer, because if you notice over here, here's the canvas renderer set alpha zero. Now, there would be a problem if you have other parts of the UI utilizing this canvas. If that is the case, then you wouldn't be able to do this. But again, this is just the basics. So set alpha to zero. We'll save it. And then the update section, we're just going to check for a key press. I believe I mentioned a, a just a few minutes earlier that in your game it wouldn't be a key press that would trigger the full screen effect it would be your character being uh, injured or something like that but since this isn't part of a full game can't really do that so input dot get key down and we'll just use the spacebar And then what we'll do is we'll set this to one. So by default, it's invisible. I hit the space key and there you go. So just like that, you can have this full screen effect and it's an effect that even if other 3D objects, you know, other models are coming at the screen, this will still be on top of it. Now let's add another. So we could use the same object. Yeah, let's do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on animation and we're just going to like as we normally would add an animation to an object. So as you can see, it says to begin animating image, and that's the name of the object. So create, we'll call this splatter. We'll take all the images, drag and drop them here. We'll change the frame rate. We'll make it much slower. It's not, it's not a very long process. It's not a, a very long sequence, I should say. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, so uh, by drag and drop them onto that, that created the animation. Now we're going to go back to the image. You can see the animators there. We're going to go back to that script and in the start sec section, we're also going to disable that. 
So get component animator. Again, it's component listed right there. And this is just enabled equals false. This is actually a technique that you can use for a lot of different components where you just name the component, you say enabled, and you say if it's true or false. So we don't want this uh, animation to run at the very beginning. So, uh, but you can do this with like good sprite renderers and, and uh, various other um, components as well, not all components, but keep that in mind if you're trying to find a simple way to stop something, you might just be able to do enabled, false, or true. Now what we're gonna do is, just as we copied and modified, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna create a new if statement because we don't want it to be triggered with the same key. So input dot get key down, and we'll just use the W key for no particular reason. Again, in yours, you would not be using input. You'd be doing something like if injured equals yes, or whatever variable you're using. If health points has gotten below a certain number, they've reached zero, that kind of thing. So if input.get key down is W, we will do two things. We're going to make this true, and we also have to set. I think we have to put the alpha there. Let's run it without it. I just want to be certain whether or not we have to do the alpha for the animation. Let's take a look. Okay, let's do W. Yeah, so it looks like we do indeed have to set the alpha to one. Save that. W, and there we go. So just like that, you could do a splatter effect. So again, we're using keystrokes instead of whatever trigger you would use. And that should do it for this tutorial. If there's any additional effects you want to see, just let me know. But this, uh, this basically walked you through a static full screen effect and an animated full screen effect. So that should do it.